Hi, Weston Knight here again, and I've got my brother's Fujifilm X-T2 here in my hands, and my brother is over there filming me on my Sony a7 III with my 300 millimeter lens on there, and it looks really good right now. So I have no idea why we did this. It just looks cool, and I thought it'd be fun to try filming a YouTube video at 300 millimeters, and it's quite cool. But in this video, we're gonna be talking about which camera do you need to get as a beginner YouTuber or filmmaker? This is my brother's Fujifilm X-T2. He's a lot more of a beginner than I am, but he's still pretty good and has won some photography awards, so I gotta give him that. He just bought this camera, and this is a huge upgrade from his Canon T2i. You know, that camera back from 2012 that all YouTubers started on? I shoot my YouTube video and some of my weddings on a Sony a7 III. I also use a Sony a7S III at work and a red Komodo and a red Weapon 6K. But when you're just starting out, you don't need the top of the line cameras, nor can you really afford them because you're just starting out. You've got to save up money doing jobs before you can upgrade your equipment. We're going to show you a comparison between this Fujifilm X-T2 kit with the 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens, which costs about $1,000 on eBay used right now versus my Sony a7 III, which costs about $2,000 used on eBay right now. I've got the 55 millimeter lens on there, but I also have a 28 millimeter lens that we're gonna use. So between $2,000 and $2,500 for my setup over there and $1,000 for this setup. We're gonna see if you just wanna spend $1,000 or if you want to go and spend $2,000 to $2,500 on a camera. So we're gonna show you some tests and comparisons and I'll help you decide if you just wanna spend $1,000 and get my top recommended camera for beginners or if you wanna spend $2,000 and get a slightly better camera but still a more beginner budget friendly camera versus some of the pro cameras. But after this video, hopefully you'll be able to make the decision for yourself which camera you wanna get. All right, here comes my recommendations after a few footage tests to show you the difference in quality between the two cameras. First is the autofocus test. This is my Sony a7 III. Sony is known for its incredible autofocus. It's been a lifesaver at weddings especially, being able to have amazing autofocus on the bride and groom during the important moments like the first kiss. So that is an important reason in my mind to get a Sony, but Fujifilm is also pretty good. But I'm gonna let you see right here and right now, me walking towards the camera, see if it hunts around, see if it locks right on, see if it's good. I gotta duck down a little bit so that I don't uh, get my head cut off in the framing because this is 55 millimeters and I'm getting really close to the lens. This is about the minimal focus distance of this lens. But yeah, I'm gonna like move around a little bit, show you some different autofocus tests. Right now I just have it at focus spot L, so it's just got a little box in the middle of the frame, and you can also do facial tracking, which works really well on Sony's. Now we are doing the autofocus test for the Fujifilm X-T2. Now, the Fujifilm autofocus is not quite as good as the Sony's. Sony is king when it comes to autofocus with Canon right below it, but Fujifilm's not far behind. It's not nearly as bad as Panasonic's stupid autofocus that uses contrast-based detection. The Fujifilm uses phase detect autofocus just like Canon and Sony, but this Fujifilm is the X-T2. The X-T3 and the X-T4 are out now, and they're newer. They're a little bit better when it comes to autofocus. They're on par with the Canons and Sonys of this world, but the Fujifilm X-T2 is a lot cheaper than those cameras. The X-T3 3 and the X-T4 are closer in price to my Sony. So keep that in mind. The Fujifilm X-T2 is our budget camera of the day and the autofocus is actually pretty good. And I'll trust this autofocus, especially if I'm just doing a talking head, like a YouTube video or something. When you're a solo filmmaker, solo YouTuber, it's pretty good. It hunts around a little bit, especially as I'm walking towards it, but it'll do a pretty good job. And remember, this is the budget camera. If you've got $2,000 to spend, maybe buy a Sony, but the Fujifilm is pretty good. It's doing a good job. It can track me. It actually has face detect autofocus, unlike Toby's last camera, which had no autofocus during video. Not fun. Now you'll also notice 
I don't have as much bokeh around me or blurry background, and that's for two reasons. We have the kit lens on the Fujifilm X-T2 right now, and that only lets you shoot at f4 when you're at this focal length and that's not that good my 55 millimeter zeiss lens on my sony camera goes down to f 1.8 at 55 millimeters and that's why you get all the beautiful bokeh and blurry background around you but toby could afford the kit lens with it right now and that will keep you about thousand dollar price range for this camera and lens setup and you can still get some good bokeh as you can see like i can get nice and close focuses on me Nice bokeh. So just gotta know how to use the camera. Zoom in a little bit, get close. Not too close, you don't wanna be too, <laughs> too up close and personal, but yeah. APS-C sensor is the other reason. The sensor inside the Fujifilm is a little smaller than the full frame sensor. You can see here the difference in size between a Fujifilm X-T2's APS-C sensor versus my Sony a7III's full frame sensor. So that is the autofocus test between the two cameras. Now we're gonna go into some real world random video tests. So we shot some random stuff on the two cameras. Let's go and watch it. In conclusion, I would say I'm divided. This camera is really good. The quality is nice. They're both 8-bit color cameras, unlike the X-T3 or the A7S3, which are a lot more expensive, but they shoot 10-bit color. 10-bit color is way better for color grading, but also more expensive to buy a 10-bit color camera. So. These are very close video-wise. They are both 8-bit color cameras that shoot similar bit rates and have similar video specs. Now, the Fujifilm, for the price, for $1,000, does an excellent job, and it has a beautiful image. I love the Fujifilm image, and I highly recommend that. If that's your budget, if your budget is $1,000, get the Fujifilm X-T2. This was my first real YouTube camera after the Canon T4i that I used to shoot on, and I loved it. It did a great job. It will stay mostly in focus on your face. It's not that bad, but the Sony definitely has better autofocus. It has better dynamic range, more low light performance. So in darker situations, the Sony shines, one because it's Sony. Sony does amazing when it comes to low light performance and it's full frame. So you have bigger pixels and they gather light a little bit better. Now the comparison wasn't 100% fair because this is just the kit lens that Toby has and my lens is a nice 55 millimeter Zeiss lens f1.8. It's a beautiful lens and so that's why I get all this bokeh, but also full frame camera versus APS-C camera. Keep that in mind. If you don't mind APS-C and you like Fujifilm, Fujifilm only makes APS-C cameras. Sony specializes in those full frame cameras and I highly recommend them. They're really, really nice. But this camera setup costs as much as a used car. This camera setup, only $1,000. Really, really good deal for this. So 
I recommend it. All these years later, you might remember I made a video when I actually got this camera, reviewing this camera. Now I'm shooting on the Sony a7 III, so just think of this as another step up your ladder when it comes to cameras. You go from the Canon T2i, to the Fujifilm X-T2, to the Sony a7 III, to the Sony a7S III, to the RED camera. You just gotta climb that ladder when it comes to cameras work professionally, shoot weddings, shoot commercials, get in the game, start with one of these cameras, move your way up, get better cameras. Thanks for watching the video. Hopefully I was able to help you know which camera you wanna get for yourself and I will see you in the next video.